Well, to be clear, I mean, there are two separate strands here. If Facebook has shared information in violation of its legal commitments to users, that's a legal and regulatory matter. There's a separate strand here that's psychological. When it comes to, you know, the garden variety exploitation of our information, Facebook and other companies in Silicon Valley often point out that they have asked for and obtained our permission to share our information. Right, at the end of an 8,000 page privacy policy that appears on our small iPhone screen. Exactly, Ari. In other words, we have given consent, but it actually has not been our informed consent. Studies show that vanishingly few people actually read the privacy policy in terms of service agreements when they sign up for online services. Uh, the researchers Jonathan Obar and Anne Oldorf Hirsch once ran a study where they asked volunteers to sign up for a fictitious new social networking site called Name Drop. It would have taken the volunteers about half an hour to read the privacy policy. CRE, the median time they spent on it was less than 14 seconds. The vast majority, Obar said, gave their consent to some really crazy things. As a form of payment, you'd be giving up a firstborn child, and 98% of participants that did the study didn't even notice this particular clause. <laughs> okay, so those people are giving up their firstborn child to this fictitious social network. Is the answer just to make privacy policies more digestible and readable, or what? Certainly, I think that's an important first step, but it probably won't be enough, Ari. You know, the real problem is not just that we don't understand Facebook. The real problem is that we don't understand ourselves. If you put a camera up in someone's room and tell them that you're broadcasting what they do, people will be very mindful of the camera for the first hour, maybe even the first day or the first week. But in a very short period of time, people are going to forget that the camera is there. Here's the thing. If you ask the person a couple of weeks later, didn't you know the camera was there? People will tell you yes, they did know. But knowing something and having it be front of mind are two completely different things. So one question is, do people know? And the answer, as you said, for the most part is they don't. And the other question is, do people care? And it sounds like not enough to actually do something. So is there a solution? Well, for the very disciplined amongst us, I suppose that education and information can help people act to protect their information. But given that many companies are exploiting not just our privacy, but fundamental aspects about how our brains work, our laziness, our inattention, our distractibility, we might need policies that can help protect us not just from companies, but protect us from ourselves.